I'm here. I'm here, everybody. How are you? I hope that you're here. Hope that you're tuning in with us. My name is Candace Don Yolo, and I am the founder of Pet Boss Nation, and I am a regular columnist for Pets Plus Magazine. And we had a little bit of some tech issues for those of you joining us live. If you're watching the replay, then you get all the glory of being able to watch a replay. And if you ever want to see the replays, you can see them on our YouTube channel, on Facebook, whether that's our Pet Boss Nation pages or Pet Plus page, or on the Pet Plus website, petsplusmag.com. So we're here because of this amazing magazine. We're here because of this amazing magazine, Pets Plus. And we are talking to a very special guest today, who is our April Cool Store feature in the April issue of the magazine. And what's cool about these behind the pages that we do is that it gives you guys, the readers, a chance to go beyond the pages of the magazine, to dig into some of the content, to get a chance to talk to some of the people that are featured in the magazine. Um, and always we feature the cool store. So I can see now that we've got some people tuning in and I thank you so much. I apologize for the timing issues that we had and some of the tech delay to get started. So um, if you're tuning in, I'd love for you to chat in the, in the chat box to let me know that you can hear me okay. If you're tuning in live. Um, if you even watch the replay, please let me know that you're here watching. Um, I'll, I'll get us started. You can see the chat box probably popped up right there. All right, wonderful. So um, what's awesome about Pets Plus Magazine is that it's a completely free magazine for uh, all of us as independent brick and mortars and independent brands to get all kinds of tips and strategies about our business and to hear about the latest and greatest things happening in the pet, pet industry. So make sure you sign up for their bulletins. They send out emails to you with all kinds of um, up-to-date information. And if you're not getting the magazine already, this free magazine, make sure you go to petsplusmag.com to get your free subscription. And I also want to mention, don't contact Pet Boss Nation about your about your subscription. I can't help you. I mean, I know some pretty cool people at the top, but you need to contact Pets Plus Mag to um, get all questions answered. All right, let me go check the chat. Looks like Pam's with us. Hey, Pam, thanks for um, chatting in the in the thread there. Now these these interviews are an opportunity for you to talk directly with the people that I'm featuring. So don't be shy. You can just chat right away in the thread and let us know uh, or let our guests know if you have a question for them or if you want to share some of your own insight with other viewers, you can absolutely do that. All right. So tonight our special guest is, like I said, April Magazine's Cool Store feature. Her name is Wendy Majesty. Oh, I think Majesty. <laughs> Majesty. She told me that I'd be able to remember it by saying Majesty. So I apologize there, Wendy. But Wendy Majesty of Mudigan's, and she has two locations in North Carolina. Mudigan's motto from the beginning has been pause and enjoy life. They started out as a pet boutique in March 2016. So they are kind of a young company. We think about the pet industry as a whole and independence. So in just a very short amount of time, I love that she's already expanded it to multiple locations. So she started just as a pet boutique in 2016 and then they added a coffee shop in February of 2017. And she's one of the very first people we're gonna be interviewing who has this food and beverage component to their pet store. It's super, super cool. Their mission statement is to provide a place where people can hang out, with your friends, whether they have fur or not. I love that. So Wendy, please turn on your camera and your mic and join us. I'm so excited to talk with you. I love you, Wendy. You know, you are, you're part of the Pet Boss Nation family. You're a club member of ours. I, I'm so happy I got to meet you at Global Pet Expo in person. Yeah. And so well, welcome to our show. Well, thanks. I'm really excited to be here. I've been looking forward to this. So. 
And yeah, you know, you pronounce it majestic. It was fine. It's I've heard a lot worse. I've heard McGeesey, MacGyce, MacGyver. That was the best one. Oh, MacGyver. But, you know, so like that. Know. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, we both have tough last names. So we're used to it, I suppose. Right. Or like yeah. you said, I love it. What did you say? We taught you said it to say like majesty. What have you always thought? I, I said, uh, I, I always say majesty, like majestic, because I'm the child of a king. Okay. That's, child uh, of a king. I, <laughs> I love that. Well, Wendy, why don't you tell us more about, about Muddigan's? So Muddigan's, the one that was in the store, um, is our, I like to call it our flagship. It is my, my passion, my heart. Um, I, I'm there a lot, but it's not work. It really is play for me. It is a it is a pet supply store and a coffee shop. It is not one or the other. It's, 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 it is both. Um, so we are located on Emerald Isle, which is the Crystal Coast of North Carolina. So really, it's just literally, um, I don't know, 500 feet from beachfront, which is super nice. Um, I, it just it's a cool place. I, I'm a, I'm biased. But um, I love my, I love my team. I love the the my customers, our regulars, and I think having the coffee component or the coffee shop component added definitely brings us a lot more regulars, and I get to know them really well. So, um, it, it just makes work fun. So. Right. So you you are um, only you said five hundred feet from the beach. Just about. Well, maybe wow. a little. Well, but, well, it's like two. I guess it's a little more than that. About yeah. two blocks away. It's hard to. Yeah. So there's no. Emerald Isle doesn't have any any beachfront stores. It's all homes there. So, okay. but we're on the main strip, about a block and a half away. That's so really I can hear the cool. waves. If I open the back door, we can hear the waves. So, yeah. So you've got some really interesting things going at Muddigan's. You are not only a pet store that also serves coffee, wine, um, and beer, and all kinds of gift things, but you also are in a tourist town, and you're on an island. Yeah, yeah. Legitimate bridge. To what to you know? There's only one way off. Well, two. There's two bridges, one on either side. That's it. Or boat. So if you commit a crime there, you better drive really fast, fly, or have a speedboat because that's the only way you can get away. With it. Yeah. Oh gosh. So when is peak season for you? So it starts. Um, it starts Memorial Day. Memorial Day weekend really kicks off. Memorial Day to Labor Day is our peak season. For us, if we can make it to St. Patrick's Day, you know, that's that's when things start to ramp up a little bit. This week, we've seen an increase because we have some spring breakers come in. Okay. The same thing with next week. So this week and next week will be a little busy. Then it tapers off. And then again, end of May, it starts to kick up. And so Emerald Isle is, at, even though it's a beach town, at heart, it's a small town. And we have just over 3,000 permanent residents. So it's a, actually a small population basis. In the summertime, that swells to 50,000. So um, the months of um, June, July, and August especially, it gets crazy there. Yeah, it's that's a huge fun. swing. That's a huge swing of people. So um, I, I'm curious because um, I know a couple other stores that are in tourist towns. And what happens for their regulars that love to shop them is that the regulars um, end up staying away during those very busy peak seasons. Um, and they, you know, the business owner is kind of worried that they're going to lose those customers. How do you combat that? Well, that's actually one of the reasons, one of the reasons that we opened the second location. Um, our regulars that, so we have a lot that live off island and that would come to the store, but in the summertime they stay away because crossing the bridge, especially during check-in and check-out times can be a nightmare. You can, it'll take you, you know, a five minute ride will take you an hour. Wow. So our second location is about seven miles away, but it's on the mainland. Um, we open there because we do grooming. We're not allowed to do grooming at our main location because, okay. it's, it, because of health, restri health department restrictions. Um, so our smaller, our second location, which is smaller square footage wise, we do have grooming there and a lot of our locals will shop there. So, especially during the summertime, that's what we found last year. So we, we service them that way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I love that because that's, that's some of the things that I've talked to these other stores about too, is that like, if, if you can't open another location, let's get some satellite locations yeah. going and other places where your regulars don't have to come into that congestion and traffic. Right. Um, so I love that you did that. 
And um, when when did you open that second store? We opened uh, June June first of last year. So it was right after okay. Memorial Day weekend. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. one of the things we have it. So okay, we've already said that the the unique things happening on an island. You have the coffee and the food and the alcohol. You um, are in a tourist town, but you also, it's a family business. Your kids are involved, yeah. so your husband's involved. So what's it like running a family company and tell us about what everybody's roles are and how they, how you guys all play together? Well, I'm the head honcho. <laughs> um, and they know it. My husband, he it does a lot of the human resources he helps me with, especially if I'm hiring or firing, I definitely run it by him. He uh -huh. used to run a, a very big company with 48 employees. So, but the day-to-day -day basis, the day, daily things, I do most of it. My son, Joshua is, he does all our, all the technology stuff that I, <laughs> that I, I don't know. Like when the phone, something happens with the phone or the computer, I'm like, fix it, just, just fix it. Sometimes he wants to show me how I tell him, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't want to know how just fix it. He's the one working on our website. He built an app for us. Um, he's working on some sales funnels. So he does all of that, but he's also a very good barista and very good with the customers. I made him learn. So he's learned from the ground up. Um, yeah. He's learned, he learned how to do sales. So that's his role in it. Um, and then my daughter, Danielle, she is our events coordinator. So we do a lot of events in the store. It's how we bring in a lot of people, especially off season. So she'll coordinate with the rescues or the shelters or it, whatever we're doing um, to, to bring people in. And so that's something else off my plate. Um, you know, the, the question was asked, do I have a separate family or home and business life? No, <laughs> it, it, no. I mean, it just bleeds over. I try to be very conscious about not talking too much about work at home. And then sometimes I just find myself with nothing to say <laughs> or it'll just slip out. Like, do you know what so-and-so said today? Or this person came in. I'm like, mm, I'm sorry. Um, look at that flower bush flowering. <laughs> but again, it, and I, I don't, for me, it, for me, it's not a problem. I don't know about my family members <laughs> because I love what I do. And it's, it's right, always, right. always thinking about creative ways to, to, you know, bring people in or just things to do. So, right. Yeah. We, we live and breathe our, our businesses yeah, sometimes. Absolutely. Do your kids live at home? Are they like in, in, in any of them at home? No, not really. I do have, so my daughter is married. I have two grandchildren. Aww. Um, I have a, and so on our Facebook, you'll see pictures of them quite often. My grandson is three years old and he calls the store grandma's house. <laughs> Well, it kind of looks like a house, you know. I'll look into that in a second. But so you yeah. call it Grandma's house. I love it. And uh, every time they get there, the first thing is, Grandma, can we have a warm chocolate? You know, so Grandma makes them chocolate with, you know, whipped cream. And, and um, my grandpa. So my grandpa had a steel manufacturing company, and it was super <laughs> cool to go to work with him. And he would take me to the vending machine area where was all yeah, for all the employees, and he'd like be able to pop open the vending machine or do something. And I was like, it was like magic. So I can only imagine what your, what your grandkids probably think of your shop and all, they get access to all these things and all the dogs. I can only oh, imagine yeah. you're, you know, it's probably this magical place in their eyes. Yeah, I think so. And they get, you know, they've been there sometimes when we've done adopt-a-thons. And so we're training them early not to just approach a dog really quickly. Mm -hmm. That's a challenge, especially with my grandson. He loves, he loves the dogs. So we're always very cautious with that. And so far, so good. Um, so she lives about half an hour away. My Joshua, Joshua lives close by, but he's on his own. I do have, I do have my youngest son. Um, his name is Luke. He has autism. So he does live with us. He's 25 and he doesn't work in the store. It's a bit overwhelming for him. Sometimes all the people he has come in to help at times. He loves, loves, loves to clean. So sometimes I'll bring him in close to closing and he'll mm -hmm. sweep and he'll mop and he'll clean the furniture. He loves doing that, yeah. but he does live with us at home. So, yeah, no, I, I only ask cause I was like, I just know like in the home environment, it's like, it's a pot. It's really hard to not talk about business. And so I yeah. asked, I was thinking, Oh my gosh, if there's already four or five actually employees uh, or not employees, but family members acting as employees in the company, it would almost yeah. be impossible to not talk about work if you oh, all yeah. work together. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Well, thank you for sharing that with us. I what I what I love that you mentioned too is um, you know in the article you know you mentioned that one of the things that sets you apart and that helps you um, thrive are all of those events that your daughter is helping you with. Mm -hmm. So I'd love for you to elaborate more on on the events and um, and, and I well I'll let you elaborate. What kind of events do you do and how do you make them successful? Well, uh, we do our basic adoptathons. So about every six weeks, we'll partner usually the the uh, with one or a few rescues in the area. Um, the primary one we go to is called Miss Place Mutts. We also do Jaded Paws and the shelter in the in the county. So we've done adoptathons. That's our standard. Um, but our our latest thing that we we're doing, we call them breed meetups. And we've done, let me see, one, two, we've done four so far, and they've been very successful. Basically, we do, we invite people with certain breeds to just come and meet each other. And during that time, we'll offer like, you know, 20% off all toys and treats or um, a free pup cup for the dogs. And people have loved it. So, so far, the first one we did was a pug. Uh, we called it a, a grumble. It was a pug meetup, but a group of Pugs is called the Grumble, so that was our Grumble, and I did that because one of my dogs is a pug, and that was fun. The second one we did, we called a Pity Party, so it was a pit bull pit mix uh, meetup. That one was very successful. People were thrilled to have a place because you know pit bulls have been so demonized um, mm -hmm. that they that they're accepted and loved. So that went very well. Our most successful one, our third one to date, has been our Doodle Day. So we had Golden Doodles, Labradoodles, Bernadoodles, Sheepadoodle. We had a King Cavalier Spaniel Doodle, something. Um, and, and then last weekend we had a, our Retriever Roundup. So we had Golden Retrievers, Labrador Retrievers. And again, people just meet and greet and they talk and it's about an hour, we do about an hour, half long. We do a raffle for a basket with, you know, a mug, like two things for the owner, two things for the dog, a toy and a treat. Um, or we do, oh, and then we have a local photographer who will raffle off a, a photo session. But basically we give people a place to meet other like-minded people. Um, and and I get requests just about every day. What up? Can you do a can you do a basset hound meetup? Or can you do a I don't know about the basset hound. We may just do. I think we're going to call it a happy hound day or something. Yeah, I like that. Well, that's the thing is, I'm sure everybody's waiting for their breed day. Right? Exactly. So that has been yeah. really popular. Um, we've also done some kind of arts and craft things. We've had we call them canines and canvas, canvases. Like um, we've had artists come in with and people would send pictures of their dogs in. And the artist would sketch it on canvas, and the people and our guests would come in and paint it, have a glass of wine, um, and we, whenever we do after our events, especially, we tie them into a fundraiser, so it, it makes it nice, and so it's a win-win all around. Um, last year we had we parted with one of the radio stations, and we did a big beach um, bark at the beach, they called it. And again, we raised money for the local rescue and food for the. Uh, animal food pantry. It was, it was a blast. So we try to find unique and different things to do. Um, one of the things we did also recently is we uh, partnered with a elementary school art teacher locally, and she had her fifth and second graders draw or paint pictures of their pets. And so we had an art exhibition on, on our, one of our walls. And they came <laughs> in. That. We had an, an, uh, a retired art teacher come and judge them, and a local business donated a gift bas a couple of gift baskets um, that we gave away to the winners. And then we asked the children if they would donate their art, um, and so they did. And we've been selling the pieces of art to raise money for the rescue. So, and so it was really neat because some of the parents have called, yeah. "Please do that one for me. That one's mine." And so. So we do, we just try to do creative things to bring and tie people in from the community. Even if, like I said, whether they have dogs or not, we try to find things mm -hmm. to be community based. Mm -hmm. And, and um, what in your mind makes an event successful? Because I'm sure sometimes you've got three people show up and yeah. sometimes the rescue cancels on you. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, there's all kinds of things. I think that us, you know, when we, we like to do events, but then sometimes we get discouraged. So for you, what makes it a good event? Well, obviously, there's, there's the, the bottom line. 
you know, if, if sales increase, that makes it successful. Um, there have been some events that have just kind of fallen flat. We, we won't talk about those too much. <laughs> we, we just work past those. It's a learning experience to say, okay, that doesn't work. Um, it increases the sales. And I have seen actually our doodle day was our second best sales day ever. So that was really nice. Wow. But, more, wow. but more so than that, when I get feedback from people and they leave um, comments like on our Facebook page, that was so great. Thank you for having that. It, it, it's very, be honest, it's very gratifying to have people thank us for doing things. I, and I know I've, I've reached a, a nerve, something that they want. So, so that makes mm -hmm. it successful in my mind, even if the numbers weren't necessarily what I want to be. When I know somebody, I made somebody feel good or made them happy or made their life a little better, that makes it successful for me. So. Yeah, I love that too. And we think about like physical brick and mortar spaces, you know, it's like that's we're we're a meeting place. And because you're you've added that food and beverage component with these events and activities, you know, it's it truly is being part of the community and a, stop, a place for them to stop. Um, and so you're you're creating memories too. I think so. Yeah. I mean, with now when I see, I'm I'm looking. Here's the thing: is I'm looking right now at photos of your store. I finally got them up. I was um, that noise you heard earlier was just because a video on the wet on the Pets Plus website was auto playing. So I had to uh, go in there and mute myself and get that fixed for a second. But I now have the photos up, and um, I'm going to share my screen here so people can actually see how adorable your shop is. Um, let's see. All right, so this is um, like, well, so when I said that your your uh, grandson thought you was like grandma's house, I'm like, well, literally is almost like a house. You know, you've got yeah. stories, you've got this big wraparound porch. It's absolutely beautiful. So does your store take up this whole front? It's the whole bottom side. Wow. Yeah, whole mm -hmm. bottom side. That's awesome. It's it's approximately 3,000 square feet. So, and on the and that's not including the porch. The porch is about 100 hundred feet long um, and we have rocking chairs on there and swings and tables so it makes it yeah. real cozy that's beautiful I love it there you go yeah and so this is one of the cool features too so you've got a, an accent table like or a feature table right you know in the middle there with the different right. you know, the holidays you must change this out often yeah yeah we do right oh, now we have to stir stuff up and we try, to keep, we try to keep it fresh and change the displays and re-merchandise. Not too much, but every so often, because it's amazing. People say, oh, you know, we'll, we'll move one thing from one side of the wall to the other. And people say, did you just get this in? This is great. I'm like, yeah. No, we had it. <laughs> right. New to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, here's another little vignette with the glass jars. I like that. You can yeah. see right through. I see the cookies. Oh, and this is Mr. HR. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that's my husband, John. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love that um, he's supportive in your business. That's amazing. Absolutely. He's my biggest cheerleader, and I appreciate yeah. it. And now we've got our little dining area here for the, the food. Mm -hmm. Can you talk more about what it's like to have a business that sells the consumables for the people? Um, do you feel like there's an added level of work or of maybe even worry or um, that, you know, does it, is it more difficult because now you've got some of these, these consumables? Um, I don't really see it as more difficult. I mean, the, even the pet food is a consumable, right? So this is just the human side of it. For me, coffee, the, what I feel is that the, I have two of the best things in the world that bring people together. Of course, one is dogs, right? Because it doesn't matter how old you are, what race, what nationality, what creed, what social strata, whatever. If you have a dog, somebody's going to talk to you, you know, so that brings people together. And the other thing for me is coffee. Um, I remember growing up, coffee was the adult beverage. So I remember the first time my mom said, here, you can have a cup of coffee. I was probably, I don't know, eight years old. And I felt like I was totally grown. I'm sure it was about an ounce of coffee with, you know, 10 ounces of milk in it, but I was grown up. So there was right. always that wonderful association with it. Um, yeah, I mean, it does bring more work. Our, our team members not only have to be trained in all the, you know, but the, the knowledge of the pet supplies, the food, the treats and all that, they have to learn how to be baristas. So they have mm -hmm. to learn how to make lattes and cappuccinos. So it's, it, and it's two different um, 
skills, but our team has, they're all really great at both. I mean, some are stronger in one area than other, as, as am I. Um, but it, it's just a natural thing in my mind anyway. And I think that's why it's been so successful and why we've done it seamlessly. We, we are not allowed to cook or bake anything there. That is part of the health restric restrictions. So it's not like a regular coffee shop where you can come in and they'll make a sandwich for you. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. But what we did do was we partnered with a, um, a local baker who she's an award-winning baker and she brings in baked goods every week and they're individually wrapped and we label them. Um, and so we have like scones and muffins and cookies and don't even get me started on the brownies. They are <laughs> amazing. They're, they're sinfully amazing. Um, and that has been very successful. And the people that go there that frequent, they know what we are. They don't come in there expecting um, like a sandwich or a soup. There's other places for that. But they come there because of what we've created, the atmosphere, the vibe. And we do, I am biased, but we do have the best coffee around. Because that's one thing I'm very particular about. I, I like a good cup of coffee. <laughs> a so. good cup of coffee. That's awesome. Um, why, you know, when I look at those photos, I get the concept of, you know, having a communal coffee shop that's dog friendly and you can have alcohol and wine at events. But then you have the other side that's selling a bunch of pet supplies. So tell us the, the history. Did it start as, as a coffee shop and you added the pet supplies or were you pet supply first and added this other stuff? Tell us the, the, where the idea came from. So we actually, so it actually started, we moved there to retire. Um, the one thing I have failed epically at, and we actually bought out another pet boutique that was on the island. It was very small, very poorly merchandised. The location was awful. Anyway, so we bought that and moved it, rebranded it. And we started carrying pet supplies. Um, we expanded that. We wanted to do something different because I understand that retail is, is straight up retail has changed. It is difficult these days. We mm -hmm. have competition online, big box stores. So we wanted to do something different. Because of the restrictions that we have on the island, we can't do doggy daycare. We can't, actually there's no, no boarding, kenneling or doggy daycare on the island allowed. It's, wow. it's, yeah, exactly. Which I didn't know till afterwards. So tossing around different ideas. And it was an experience at another coffee shop that we had one day that gave us the idea of adding that shop. Luckily, that location, we didn't start out in that location. We started out in a 1500 square foot store. That location was available, had been available for almost three years. It sat empty. And luckily, it was the same. Our, we're builders. So it was the same landlord. Um, we came up with the idea in actually it was December 16th of 2016. We opened our doors February 1st, 2017. When we came up with the idea, I didn't know the difference between a cappuccino and a latte myself. So I'm a black coffee drinker. So, but I knew I could learn and I knew it was a good idea. And I figured, you know what, let's, let's give it a try. And, and I'm really glad we did. So, but I hired somebody that was a barista. So. I always know if I don't know something, I hire somebody that does or I get somebody that does and knows better than I do. No, <laughs> no it's a great philosophy. I would love uh, actually there's two things there I want to I want to dig deeper on with you to um, to explain more to, to our viewers. So um, one that you said that if you don't know how to do it, you're going to hire somebody to help figure it out. Tell yeah. us more about that and why it's important. Well, um, I like to learn. I'm always reading, always learning, um, trying new things, but I, I realize there's a limit to my skill set, like technology, for example, um, which is why I gave birth to a son who was really good at that. <laughs> but like with the, with the barista, I didn't let the fact that I didn't know how to do those things stop me from doing that. I knew that I could find somebody who was better at it or who knew how to do it. And I was willing to turn that over to them. And I think the hard part was Admitting, first of all, admitting that I didn't know. Um, and then second of all, trusting that person to do the right thing. So, and of course, since then I've made modifications. I have learned now I can make an excellent cappuccino. I, I can get that foam where it's like a pillow top, it's great. But I, I had to trust. And I think sometimes as entrepreneurs, that's a challenge for us is, mm -hmm. is turning over that control or saying, well, they know more than I do. Let me learn at their feet. Mm -hmm. And the person that I hired as a barista, she was not, um, she was a local Island girl. So kind of a surfer girl, not what you would think of as, you know, somebody very, um, experienced or savvy, but she knew about coffee. And so I, I 
you know, I, I learned from her. I, mm-hmm. I wasn't ashamed to say I learned from this 21 year old surfer mm-hmm. girl. So. <laughs> I like that. Um, and you also um, tried something that you didn't know if it would work or not. I'm probably assuming, you know, like you're, you're going to take this, gonna buy this business that's failing. You're going to introduce a concept. You're going to move to a new location. You're going to introduce a concept that may or may not work. You're in a tourist town. It's not going to have half the time. People, there's not going to be enough people there to give you the money. So there yeah. were a lot of risks against you, but you're, yeah. you know, you're surviving and you're thriving. Uh, yeah. and you're stri- surviving so much that you're our cool store feature and our pets plus. <laughs> <everything>. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so um, I guess I'd love to hear more about, you know, what is it inside you that, you know, helps you take that leap of faith? And if there has been any moments in your life where, you know, that had the, that you've had to face that helped you with this moment. Um, so one of my life motto, it's a, a paraphrase of Napoleon Hill. And I literally have this, my kids have grown up hearing this. It's out of every adversity comes a seed of equal or greater benefit. So whenever something bad happens, I just, I look, I don't, I don't expect it to stay bad. I actually look for the good thing that's going to come out of it. Um, you know, as far as taking these challenges, I, I'm always, I've always been some sort of a risk taker. I probably drove my mom crazy <laughs> as a young girl. Um, I was the one that would dive off the pier at Coney Island uh-huh. you know, when there was no other girls around. I, I, um, and later in life, I got a Harley. I started riding a motorcycle. As you know, I was a law enforcement officer. So I carried a gun, all these things. There, So there is, I think, part of who I am that doesn't mind the risk. But I take what I call calculated risks. So even with adding the coffee shop and all that, first of all, opening the pet boutique or buying that business, I, I researched the pet industry. I've always owned pets. I know how important they are to me. And I have had other business experience. I've owned other businesses. Um, as a stay-at-home mom, I had a bookstore. Did a, so I, I've always been an entrepreneur, basically. Mm-hmm. This by far has by far has been my favorite venture. Um, as far as taking a risk, I thought, well, if it doesn't work, I'll, I'll figure something else to put there. I'll, I don't know. I'll open up a gift shop or something there. Right. But I knew I knew if I didn't try it, it would always haunt me. And so you know how you read at the end of at the end of your life. I want to. It's the things that that we don't do that we regret the most. And I, I don't want to live with that regret ever. So I gave it a try and yeah. so, far, so far so good. Yeah, so far so good, I love that. Yeah, and I love that you are, the, are a risk taker, I'm kind of the same way. Like I, I'm just like, what's the worst gonna happen? Nothing's gonna kill me. So if I want to just try yeah. it, I mean, well, things will kill us, but I can prove it probably won't. But, um, but you know, like whether it's getting on a Facebook Live or whether it's writing your first blog or hiring your first employee or, you know, having to fire an employee or fire a customer. Like there's all kinds of confrontation that has to happen too in business. And so it's not about, you know, the, the courage I probably that you and I both have there is more like, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Exactly. Exactly. And it's, try it. And don't get me wrong. There's been days where, you know, we had a hurricane last year that affected our area greatly. I mean, it it was hard. There have been days where I've come home and I thought I quit. I'm just, I'm just going to quit. I'm just going to shut the doors. I don't want to do this no more. I'm going to like pack up and get on an airplane goes, I don't know. I'm just going to quit. Yeah. And, and then I get a good night's sleep. Usually that'll do it. Or I'll go, you know, we live by a river, so I'll go floating on the river or something or go walk the beach and I clear my mind and I'm like, okay, I won't quit today. Maybe tomorrow I'll quit, but I won't quit today. I'm not going to quit today. Exactly. Yeah, that's and, really real. I mean, that's, I mean, you, you have had to face um, the, the, the elements challenge and the physical weather. I mean, my goodness. Yeah. There would be lots of days where you're like, well, I, you know, I know all of us, I think all of us face that. Somebody said to me recently, they're like, every day I feel like, you know, I have a different opinion about my life or my business. And I'm like, I have that every 15 minutes. All right. <laughs> every 15 minutes. I'm like, I'm awesome. I'm amazing. I suck. I'm horrible. Yes. Let's just shut the whole system down. No, let's keep yeah. going. We've got great things to do in the world. You know? <laughs> yes, exactly. There's days where I feel like 
I am invincible. And then the other days I'm like, <laughs> I look in the mirror, I'm like, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Who are you kidding? You know? <laughs> yeah. And but you do it anyway. That's the thing. Yeah. And I think the the more the older I get, I think part of what has helped is I take myself less seriously than I used to. Because if I do, like doing the Facebook lives, mm -hmm. you know, they haven't all been great. Um, I don't care. And I actually realize that most people don't care either. I mean, I'm a real person, right? So I'm not, I'm not a supermodel. I'm not, I'm a real person. And uh -huh. I think that that makes us relatable. And so, and if people don't like me, it, it's okay. <laughs> I learned that, especially in law enforcement. There was a lot of people who didn't like me. That was okay. That's right. Talking. Actually, we haven't even talked about you. You kind of, kind of hinted at your previous careers. So you had a bookstore. You're in law enforcement. Yeah, I've done a lot of things. A lot of, but like I said, this by far is favorite. I am. Um, my husband was in law enforcement for 37 years, and so I did five. Uh, I was a patrol deputy. I covered 850 square miles of rural county by myself, and then last year I spent as a school resource officer. And I, I learned a lot there. It was a growing. Um, it was definitely a growing experience. I was also a stay-at-home mom, and that, other than what I do now, that was probably my favorite job, because it was. It was hard. It was hard work every day. I had four children, and so, yeah. but uh, but life to me is a life is a journey. I, I, mm -hmm. I admire people who who know what they want to do early on in life, and like they're young, and they, they know they want to be, you know, doctor, lawyer, Indian chief, whatever, and, and they, they pursue that, um, and they stick with it all their lives. To me, that's really cool. I was not one of those people. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like I said, I was a serial entrepreneur. That that I have always done since the age of like five. I, I used to um, color in my coloring book, like like by age of five or six, you know, cut them out and I would sell them to my parents. <laughs> like I wouldn't give it to my parents. And I know this because my dad kept one till the day he died. It was a Mickey Mouse coloring thing, and I had made a little frame for it, and it was a little price tag of seventy five cents. And he, you know, so that's, it's just what I've always done. I love, I guess I love to sell. Um, but life to me is a journey and I've been really, I've been really blessed to, to be able to experience different things. Um, there's a trade off also. I mean, and I realize that I don't have maybe the stability that some people have had. I don't have that big retirement fund or anything, but for me, it's been a trade off that is definitely worth it. Cause I feel like I've been able to touch people's lives. And at the end of the day, that's what really makes a difference. How many, how many lives you touch, how many lives do you make better? And so, um, so it's, it's a fun life. Not always, but not every day, but today it is. <laughs> today it is. Oh, I love your positive outlook. So we have someone that's watching live, Teresa, she's raised her hand or is using a raised hand emoji. <laughs> so I don't know if Teresa has a question, but Teresa, I can't bring you on live, but you're welcome to ask your question in the chat, um, or she just may have been like, I, amen, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm not sure what that emoji means, but hey, Teresa, if you've got a question or if any of you have questions, I'll just type them in the chat and we can get them answered. Um, I would love to know, I, I'd go back to some more ideas about being in a tourist town. Like what do, what do you do when, the, when, this, when it's off season? to get through? Or do you make enough money during the season to survive? Have you thought about closing? Maybe do you close? No, we don't close. A lot of businesses around here do, especially some of the restaurants, they do close. We don't because, um, I mean, we have dog food, we have treats, we have toys. Dogs don't care if it's December, high season lows, they don't care. They want their toys, they want their treats, they want their food. And my goal is to service my community. Um, if I don't service them during the off season, they'll never come back. They will find alternatives. So we do stay open. There are months that we um, just barely pay the bills, um, but it, we make up for it in the summer season. So if you compare, if I compare like January and February tend to be our very slowest months. If I compare our January numbers to say July, we'll do easily three times as much in July as we do in January. Mm -hmm. So in the off season, again, we do try to bring events in. We, I get bored, so we do a lot of re-merchandising. I'm like, oh, let's move it over here and let's make it look, you know, different. We do a lot of spring cleaning then. Um, mm -hmm. But the other hard part of it too is that is staffing. Staffing becomes an issue for yeah. us. That was another one of my questions is right. who are the type of people that you can either 
you know, do you, are you able to find people during the, the height of the season as well? Or is that a challenge? So we do. I'm already fully staffed for the summer. Um, we are, we're, we're a cool place to work. It, uh, you know, they get to hire younger staff. people who are on break or it doesn't matter where your area. Right. Are. So some of our staff tends to be college students that want just summer jobs. Um, so, and, and when I hire them for the season, I always tell them this is a seasonal position. You know, there is always the possibility of retention afterwards, but they, they know up front that it's seasonal. Some of them, like I said, the college students, that's fine because they leave at the end of August, beginning of September to go back to school. Um, and then we have some locals who they're just looking for maybe for a part-time job or just want a little extra. If you live in this area, you, you already know that this is what happens. It, it just it just is a thing. People start looking for employment usually in March, and they know when the East season ends that it may not be there. Um, it's just a reality of living in a tourist season. At least I am one of the ones that stay open year round. So I do have some full time employees that have been with me um, since the beginning. Well, I have one in particular that's been with me since the beginning. Um, and a couple that I've joined on that are that are local that we, that we will retain. Uh, so it's hard though, because I don't always get the same people that come back every year. So mm -hmm. it's training, it's training all new staff. It's, it's rotating and training. Um, but so far we've been okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so was, so we just met recently, um, in person at global pet expo. Yeah. Um, were there, now was that your first big pet trade show? No, I went last year to global. You went last year as well. Mm -hmm. So while you were walking around this year, was there anything cool that you really loved or trends that you saw that you think are really cool you want to bring back? Well, so many things actually tomorrow I'm really excited. And I think somebody had asked this in our pet boss nation. I'm getting my fa my family tag machine tomorrow. Oh, yeah. It's I checked. I am so super excited about that. Um, Cause that's one thing that we had lacked. We get people coming in and like, can you make tags? No. Cause I was holding out for this. It's something that I wanted. So big investment. Yeah. It's a big investment. Yeah. But I think one that'll pay off, especially because, um, I know I can make like keychains, and so living on a tourist area, branding with like Emerald Isle is a thing. Mm -hmm. So I can mm -hmm. pre-make some um, with you know Emerald Isle 2019 or something. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think it's going to be going to be huge yeah. for you because um, not only the the branding, but that customization. I mean, with me, you know, Candice, I can't find Candice on any right. keychain and on any you know spinner in some touristy area. But if I can come to a shop like yours and actually have you know the name spelled out perfectly, right? Uh, perfectly, then um, then it's a, it's a win. And I also think those those my tag machines. I'm excited for my family tag machines. I'm excited for you too because um, I think everyone that's been nervous about making that big investment to bring it in has been so happy with the payoff. I think that like, you know, you got to get over, that's just like any mentoring or coaching or anything you're, when you invest in yourself, right? right? You're, it's yeah. just big upfront thing. And you're like, I gosh, I hope I'm going to get my money back or see the return. And I'm right. well, I, you know, I think you'll be happy. Um, as most people I think have, have been. So, um, there's actually going to be a lot of opportunities you can use for that too. You know, you could probably team up with your other businesses and see, see um what they might have a need for you can get into i always said like kids um like those little charms for their backpacks or bags exactly. yeah and stuff. zipper pulls all kind of neat stuff so i i've got i've got plans <laughs> so, <laughs> i think when i say that like i just had a thought i think my family and my team are like oh my god here she goes again <laughs> you know, what is it great we came back from the trade show with all these ideas we're gonna have to like <laughs> Yeah. Our back room, our storage room, we have two small store. We have one storage room that's smaller and, the, uh, and then the larger one. Um, the past couple of weeks, they've been packed. <laughs> you know? so I brought in new staff. I'm like, okay, this is our back storage room. It doesn't always look like this, but I just came back from a big trade show. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was great. I mean, I, I highly recommend anybody who hasn't gone to the global or any of the big, you know, super zoo go because it's it's there's nothing like seeing things in person or meeting like i we've talked we've done this i've seen you but just meeting face to face it just it just changes dynamic so much in my opinion mm -hmm. um it's definitely worth it and it, it's hard like even last year it was hard for us to go it was easier this year because i've learned to pull away more from the store and work on it my business instead of in it mm -hmm. um but last year it was harder but i did it anyway 
And and then I, from now it's like, well, now I just have to go. It's just a thing. I realized it was an investment in my business and in myself. And so, mm-hmm. and and uh, definitely don't ever plan to miss another one. So plus okay. plus it's you know it's it's Orlando. Yeah. I love I, yeah, I love it. well. So I live in, in in the south still, but um, the humidity level not so much. I didn't <laughs> I didn't care for, but and we didn't get to go to Disney this time. But one of these years we will. Yeah, yeah. add that next time. Add that next time. Um, okay, so as we wrap up here, guys, if you have any questions at all, feel free to type them in the chat. Um, Gracie Pearson says, feeling so inspired by this great interview. I love that, Gracie. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad you're feeling inspired. I'm inspired, too. Um, I love Wendy's sense of um, energy and positivity and uh, your outlook on life. So what other, you know, you, you read, I think I've read in our show notes here, you read about four books a month. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm an avid reader. Um, I am currently reading um, The Good Life, the story about the, you know, the branding, The Good Life. So, oh, yeah. I'm reading, yeah, I'm reading about the brothers. I read a variety of books, uh, basically all nonfiction, but business books or um, um, biographies, that kind of thing. I believe that who you are is highly tied into what you, who you expose yourself to, who you surround yourself with and what you expose yourself to. I don't really watch TV much. I'm not, I never have been much of a fan. Uh, so I read and I think that's one of the best and cheapest ways to learn and, and to explore. Um, I was very lucky, very blessed to have parents. My mom read to me very early on. Mm-hmm. So I, I can, so my thing is when I don't know something, I can learn it. I can find a book on it and I can learn about it. So I guess I'm not afraid to try things because if someone else has done it and they've written about it, I can learn about it. And Mm -hmm. and I want to encourage people to do that. Like, don't be afraid. There's something out there written about it. Um, Mm -hmm. So, and it's hard for me to say, people ask me, what's your favorite book? I, I, there, (laughs) it it just depends what I'm reading currently. Cause you know, um, I think in my, high school years it's funny because my paradigm shifter was believe it or not the lord of the flies was a book that stuck with me for some reason just about human nature i do like reading books about human dynamics um, but i think it's really important to read and that's so that's what i do in my spare time is read i'll lay on the beach and i'll read i'll lay on the couch and read um it's fun it's it's it opens up all different kind of worlds and all different kind of i like biographies too because you get to learn about other people's experiences in life. And it's important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's interesting to you. Uh, oh, there goes Clover. <laughs> um, so I'm not a big book reader. I, I love audiobooks and I love the power of books, but I struggle to like sit through because I feel like I have to read word for word from front to back. And then I get into it. And I'm like, I'm already bored. And I can't, do, you know, it's, it's kind of double for me. Right. But what's interesting is I, I saw a quick little video that Jay Shetty did um, about reading books and how he reads books. And he goes through them and kind of, you know, initially goes through like the table of contents and like just looks for chapters that are really that he resonates with quickly. Right. And then he'll go through and he reads, you know, he always reads the first chapter. And then he goes through and he that jumped out to him in the table of contents. And that's just kind of for him, how he can get through some of the books. Do you have any strategies around your book reading or do you literally read every word from front to back? I, unless it's really boring. And I have put down books that I just, they're just it's like slogging through mud. I'm like, I just can't, <laughs> I just can't. And I, and I have no problem with putting down a book that doesn't speak to me at all, or that's boring, or it's just, I don't get anything out, out of it. Um, I used to be the kind that books to me were almost sacred. It didn't matter what you're like a paperback book. They were so sacred that I, if my children dog eared the corner of a book that was like committing a crime, it was awful. But you know, I, so, and so my bookshelf was like full of pristine books. Like I would read them and delicately turn the pages. Well, recently I did have a shift in thinking. I like, these are my, these are my teachers. These, a lot of these books Mm -hmm. are my teachers. So now I read with a highlighter and Mm -hmm. that was an Mm -hmm. actual shift for me. So when I read something, I'll highlight it because otherwise I forget that it's there. I mean, it's in my, in the back of my conscious, but if I want to go back to something, I don't remember where it's at. You can, the visual cue for you where to stop and double check. 
So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm big into highlighting and I write notes in books. So instead of, mm -hmm. I've shifted my thinking from books being the sacred thing to being my friends, you know, and, um, and just like with my, like with you or people that I deal with on a daily basis, we, there's an interchange. So that's mm -hmm. my interchange when I write in the books, I'll write notes like what a great idea or, you know, a hot exclamation point or something. Or, um, so, but again, I, I have books. I picked up a book on Disney recently and it's a very thick book, which didn't scare me. <laughs> but when the first chapter I had to Google the definition of about 12 different words. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm an avid reader, so I have a pretty good vocabulary. That one just got me. I said, no, nope, forget it. This, this yeah. is going to take me two hours. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, but yeah. they're my friends. We're not going to pay your time was more valuable than learning new vocabulary. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, no, no, I shouldn't have to, you know, Google what is the definition of something. Forget it. Because yeah. I, I still don't remember what the words were. <laughs> I thought uh, that, that person was either writing just way above my level or they were just writing to impress themselves because they exactly. surely didn't impress me. <laughs> Exactly. Um, well, for those of you that are joining in, I can see we've got a few more viewers tonight. We started, uh, we had our timing a little off tonight for those of you joining live. Um, if you're coming in late because you thought we were going to be starting um, soon, the replay will be available instantly. You're going to get an email that will send you the, the link for the replay and you can watch it right away. Um, so again, if there's any questions, pop them in the thread um, before we pop off. But Jennifer has a question here. She says, what's your favorite autobiography? Any of those? Hmm. My favorite autobiography. I can tell you which one I'm reading now that I'm really enjoying. It is uh, Betty White. <laughs> oh, I bet that would be great. It's because she is so full of vigor. You know, she has just lived her life. Um, so that's the one I'm enjoying a lot right now. Just it's a it's her it's her yeah, biography. Um, so. I love that. Uh, so any, you know, there was one question that we put in our, you know, show notes and questions for you. And it was like, what pisses you off? <laughs> and you're like, I don't know what I'm going to be thinking about that answer. So I don't want to not give you the opportunity to share what pisses you off about either the pet industry or order or customer, what pisses you off? If you want to answer it, if not, you can just sit back. So my very, very initial thought when I read that question was like, a lot of things, <laughs> and, I laugh. and so actually, there's very little that pisses me off in general because I, I I recognize that people are just they're just humans, you know. We all have our foibles, we are, we all have our our quirks and our pet peeves. I think that in life, in business, willful ignorance is a thing that um, just gets under my skin like nothing else. Or people who rely on. Um, when they want information and they rely on like Facebook posts, just like just straight up Facebook for information and they come and they'll bring me something. Well, I saw this on Facebook. Okay. Very good. And, and they swear it's the God's given truth because they saw it on Facebook. Didn't check the source. Don't know. Yeah. The, they don't know who wrote it, but they want to challenge me or, or not argue with me. Uh, just, um, <laughs> like, you know, with some of the foods, for example, because they read it on Facebook. So that that's kind of right. irritating. That is irritating, right? Yes. Totally irritating. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, so Teresa is saying that she just joined a book club to force herself to not always be in her business. She's guilty of working 24-7 and has made a commitment to herself to read for enjoyment rather than working. And she's a really Good. enjoying reading again. So I love that. I don't read much nonfiction, but I do occasionally, and I call it my brain candy. <laughs> so, just like I try to eat healthy, I try to read healthy, but every so often, like, you know, those brownies I was talking about, mm -hmm. nothing like a good brownie. So there's nothing like a good brain candy book. So enjoy, <laughs> Teresa. That's good advice. Amazing, amazing. Well, Wendy, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And for everyone who tuned in live, and for those of you coming in late, again, I apologize. The replay will be available for you guys. Um, if you want to see the full article that was in the Pets Plus magazine, there's a link in the chat right now and we'll post it in the um, replay post, but you can check it out in the physical copy or you can go to Pets Plus magazine, sorry, petsplusmag.com to see on the full interview um, with Wendy and to see all those pictures again. 
And um, next month, we already have our dates and our times for our next month that's plus live beyond the pages. So our very first lunch and learn will be on May 14th at 1 p.m. Eastern. It's May 14th at 1 p.m. Eastern. It'll just be me. And I'll be actually maybe Wendy, I should bring you back for this one. It's about it's about Facebook Live um, parties and how to have fun selling um, online um, through a Facebook Live and your shop or your uh, even your brand. If you're brand, you can do these too. So that's May 14th at 1 p.m. Eastern. And then May's cool store feature, if I um, am not announcing something too soon, but it is a store called Notorious D-O-G. <laughs> and it's on Wednesday, May 29th at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's Wednesday, May 29th. I'll be interviewing them. So um, thank you again to everyone who has tuned in and who always supports uh, the Pets Plus Live Beyond the Pages. Wendy, you're awesome. You're amazing. I love what you do at Mudigan's. Oh, you and, uh, I appreciate you. So. <laughs> well, thank you. All right, everyone, have a wonderful night. We will see you next time. Bye bye. We'll do. Bye.